All right, this is going to be the tutorial video for the brown granite that everybody seems to love. I've had a lot of requests for how to do this particular pattern, so I uh, decided to make a video for you guys. Uh, I want to start with our ingredients and how we do it. Um, in isopropyl alcohol, I'm using 99%. I've got uh, some dark bronze metallic with a little bit of brown translucent dye. We've got diamond dust and white metallic and a copper colored metallic suspended in alcohol. You probably can't see it because my bottles are dirty. And of course, clean 99 ISO. Brown, translucent, and black dye. These are the spray cans we're using. Some black and gold marble, black and white spray paint. Uh, antique gold and hammered copper um, having a hard time finding the uh, rust-oleum 2x right now so some of these are Krylon uh, they work okay not the best but they'll do in a pinch and finally some mica flakes uh, I think one of these is kind of like a gold and the other one is just white or silver and of course our applicator sponges this is the key to using this technique and I'll show you how that comes in later. Um, we're going to use this piece of plexiglass as our palette. We're going to squeeze out some dye, black and brown, onto that and use that to distribute it to our sponges to put it on our board. Now, on the board, it is primed with white bonding primer. And uh, what I did differently than normal was I did not sand the second layer, which gives you the beginnings of a pattern already for the background now we put down some of our bronze and some of our copper on this already just randomly with our alcohol spray bottles that is now dry so we're going to continue this video picking up where i left off there now that you guys know the recipe all right so our next step is going to be pre marbling for this we're going to use our black montana cans marble spray uh typically what I like to do here is use a fan. Actually, I'm just going to do it. Let's see. I want to have to apologize for the noise, but it's worth it because I found that by using a fan of some kind, it gives a completely different effect than you would normally get out of your Montana cans. Uh, find something to prop that up on a little further. Trash bucket will work just fine. So you're, normal, you're used to seeing how the, uh, the marble lays out and a swirly vein pattern. Well, by using an air mover or a fan, we're going to straighten that out a little bit. And that's about all we want to do really that's going to lead to a little bit of additional texturing with this technique that we're going to use we're going to be re-emulsifying the dyes on this several times which means adding alcohol to it to get it to break up and start traveling into some of these textured veins left by the bonding primer and now again by the black marble spray because if you used it before you know it's got a little bit of a texture to it. So we're just going to dust this lightly with some white 2X, uh, usually 2X, this time it's uh, Krylon, just to dull out some of the black, make it more gray in areas than actual black. Not all of it, just where it's kind of heavy, blunt it out a little bit.
and this will also help protect it because every time the alcohol hits these lines, it's going to want to run on you. But if you got a nice little thin film of white paint on there, it blunts that black out a little bit and keeps it from bleeding on you. All right, so now that we got that down, we're going to take our white and diamond dust and apply it liberally to give some uh, underlying sparkle to it. Big drops, little drops, don't matter. All right, so now to the fun part. Move this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Now I've used these sponges for an entire set of counters and God knows how many sample boards at this point. So these are already gonna be pretty much pre-soaked with the dyes and the paints and such that we're gonna be using. <coughs> but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit on hand. So this is, can't tell. All right, this is our brown. Squeeze some out on our palette. That makes this our black, which is almost empty, but that's fine, doesn't take much. All right, so we start with our darkest color first and build up from there. Pick a sponge that you like the indentations of. I think I use this one for black a lot, so I'm just gonna kind of go back to it. Pick up some black, now we're just going to dab it on randomly. Doesn't really matter, kind of twisting it so you don't have repetitive images of this sponge anywhere. Dab some on our edges, do some heavier spots. Now the alcohol that we put down on the board is going to pull some of this off of the sponge. And if we start getting too light, we can just go back to our well on the palette and pull some more color. Kind of randomly, not really good, uh, being careful at all with this, just making sure the color is represented at least in most places. Not really fond of that big mess right there, so I'll throw some heavy black on that. All right. Now for our primary color, which is going to be the brown translucent in this particular recipe, uh, I'm going to use a larger sponge. Uh, I like this one quite a bit, so I'm just going to tear off a piece of it, give myself a new texture. I'll rub it around on this. Now it looks all black right now. But once that alcohol hits it and starts diluting it, it's going to look completely different. In fact, there's enough alcohol on the board, I can start, uh, I can see it start to bleed right now. If sponge dries up, you can always hit it with a little bit of alcohol and drop some heavier color onto it doesn't really matter how careful you are at this point because this is all going to change and a lot of this is going to be coming back off the board. I don't want to keep my sponge super wet because as I go, it's leaving different amounts of color in different places, which really helps to randomize what's going to happen here. I know it looks like a crappy mess right now, but right now all we're doing is distributing our colors in the proper amounts. And your mileage may vary. I can change from project to project. 
client to client, aesthetic that you want, the aesthetic that you want. All right, so we're still looking a little light on color, so I'm gonna come back over here and grab my dark brown and my copper and add some alcohol to this. Now this is gonna start mixing with the dyes that we just put down and creating their own unique colors. It doesn't matter how much we get on the surface, we're just trying to put color down right now. Oh yeah, that's looking nice and messy. Alright, I got company. I'm going to have to pause the video and come back. Now, your board is going to look super muddy like this. That's not a problem. We'll fix it. All right. Picking up right where we left off. Nothing's been done with the sample board yet, but that's all right. Because what we're going to do is we're going to re-emulsify this dye with our alcohols. It really doesn't matter. So we're going to add a bunch of different color to this board. Lots of alcohol. Lots of color. Because we're going to be taking, we're going to be taking most of this back off. But what this does is it puts some of our copper metallic, our bronze metallic, our white, and diamond dust metallic into the mix. Make sure the board's nice and soaked. And then we're going to take our paints. I'm using antique gold and hammered copper. And just add a bunch of this. Now the reason we do that on top of the alcohol is because it's going to float on top of the alcohol. But as we're taking some of it off, we're going to take a lot of this color back off. As it's taking that color off, it's going to leave behind some of the paint, some of the metallic, some of the dye. And as those metallics settle, just like the bonding primer texture that we got and the marbling texture that we got some of that's going to start to cling to those veins it may not look like much now but it's going to look really organic when we're done with it yeah you can see right here how some of that uh, cellular veining is already starting to appear so we're just going to take a bunch of this color back off. Any of the heavy wet areas, we're going to start pulling color. And if you need want to pull more color, just mist it with clean alcohol. Again, it'll re-emulsify that dye. And just keep going until you get the desired results. We'll leave some areas, we'll leave some areas kind of heavy, kind of dark, and we're going to take some areas back to almost white. Not being careful with this at all because it's all going to keep changing over the next few minutes. Now I'm rotating my paper towel. A, to be able to soak up more material, more dye, more alcohol, more paint, but also to give it a new texture, a new pattern. Yeah, that's starting to look good. Still kind of dark for what we're going for, at least on the pattern that we're trying to replicate. So we're going to re-emulsify it. And you can just watch it change every time you hit it with the alcohol. We're already getting real tight cellular patterns and veining going on. Honestly, this is starting to look like stone before we ever even hit it with epoxy. 
but we want to bring it we want to make it a little bit lighter right at least to replicate what I did on the recent countertop project so keep this wet I'm gonna take a little bit more off of it tight cellular structure going on already and every time you hit it with the alcohol it's going to change it a little bit so we're basically faux painting I guess you could say all right now I'm starting to really like the way this base color is looking right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take white metallic, my white spray paint, and my two metallic spray paints. So the white metallic with the uh, diamond dust in it, it's going to start re-emulsifying this, but it's also going to give us a layer of liquid that's going to evaporate for our white paint to stick to. I shouldn't say stick to because what it's going to do is it's going to run off the sides, leaving little white granular structures in there for us. So big drops of our white metallic. Hi, Bubba. Daddy's filming a video. You're going to have to go. No, 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 no. Don't come in. I'm filming a video. And look, even, even with just what we've done so far, it's already looking really natural, really organic. You're starting to see some of these uh, fracture lines from the marble spray show through the tent colors. But every time you hit it with that alcohol, it's going to change on you a little bit. So I've got a heavy layer of alcohol. I want to keep my clean alcohol ready to break this with, so we're going to throw some white to it. Kind of looks like hell, but as soon as we hit it with a little bit of alcohol, all that's going to start changing again. Opening back up to the colors that we've already put down. All right, and we're back. And this is starting to look a lot like the countertops we just made. Now this is just alcohol, paint, and mica powder. There's no epoxy yet. So if you like it the way it is, you can stop at any point. But the great thing about doing it this way is every time you hit that ink, that dye, with some alcohol, it's gonna move on you again. So honestly, I'm really liking this. I like what we got going on. I think it looks really natural. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to let this dry and let that alcohol evaporate off. And then I want to come back through with my black spray paint. Directly on a sponge. I like this one. And we're going to sharpen up some of these lines. We're just going to add some sharpness, some definition to what we already have going on, which in my opinion, it looks really good. It looks like stone. And we're going to do the same thing with our uh, gold. I really like adding some of this gold to it, uh, doing the same spray directly on the sponge and dab it on technique. It gives you uh, little flecks, almost, they're not veins, but it's almost like a vein was coming up through that slab and then cutting away from it. I think it looks really good. So that's mostly evaporated at this point. So we're going to torch it just to make sure, because as soon as you hit the alcohol, if there's alcohol still left, as soon as you hit that with the paint, the paint's going to want to run. 
So now that we've got a really good base color down. Oh, there she goes. And all we're doing is burning that alcohol off, right? So, all right. What I'm seeing right now is I want a little bit more brown definition, so I'm gonna grab a sponge that's got primarily browns on it, re-wet my palette with a little 99 ISO, grab some of that translucent brown, and just drab, drop little defined lines into it. Now, I like going with some of the natural contours. Yeah, it looks good. So if I've got big splotches of color, I'll go through and overlay a little bit of brown so that you get these, uh, here. I'll tell you what, let's try this. Soaking up some of my brown, and we have this big blank field, right? So we're gonna dab some, connect it, bring it together, tie it over into that dark spot there. Doesn't take much, just little lines to bring some definition back to these washed out fields, right? And we can also spray our sponge to reactivate the dye that's already in it. So let's say this area down here, right? Doesn't look quite natural, so we're gonna bring it up very lightly, fade it. Doesn't matter if it runs a little bit, streaks a little bit on you. Looks like hell, but as soon as we hit it with a little bit of alcohol, that's all gonna change. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Just drop some defined little jags in there with our dye. Again, this is brown translucent. Kind of looks like hell, right? Not so fast. All right, I'm going to switch over to some spray paints, add some highlights, hit it with a little bit more alcohol, and when it moves this final time, I think I'm going to like it. Well, I already like it, but I think it's going to be ready to start adding our uh, our highlight effects like the uh, mica flakes. Sorry. There we go. All right. So I'm going to start with my darker colors just like we have the whole time. I'm going to start with my darker colors and work my way out. I'm going to go over top of the brown areas just here and there dropping some black into the center of the brown so that once we hit this all with alcohol it's going to move a little bit but it's going to look like the brown started at the black and worked its way out kind of like the it gives you the effect of deep consistent veins spreading so just by adding a little bit of black to our browns that's the effect we're going to get don't need much. And this sponge is getting hard. <laughs> All right, I like the way that looks. So now, certain paints are gonna act differently. I'm going to use the white and diamond dust to re-emulsify this and give my gold a layer to rest on. because the gold doesn't like to fracture and break nearly as much. I just want to drop hints of gold in throughout. As long as you have a layer of alcohol for the paint to move on top of, it doesn't matter what paint you use, I'm going to heavy through this area. As long as it's got alcohol to move on underneath of it, the paint will still move even if it likes to film over on top. All 
All right, now it's probably hard to tell the, the different color profiles that you have in there, but that's your browns, your coppers, your golds, your blacks. And if you're doing it on a white base, it gives you those grays and off whites and creams and everything, all the, uh, the amalgamations of color that you get by mixing the other colors that we've already mentioned along with the whites. So go let that set for just a second. Go through and sponge a little bit back off, open up back some white space. And we just do this until we're happy with it, until we get the kind of lines that we're looking for. And by doing this, it breaks up any pattern our sponge would have left. Gives us some little sharp defined lines here and there. I'm really liking the way this is looking. Yeah, I really like that. I'm gonna add a little bit more gold. do is the same kind of fracturing and breaking I was doing with the gold with the black I'll pick an area that's kind of uh, doesn't have a lot of feature to it yet put a layer of alcohol down fog it with black and then break that that was a little heavy so I'll dab some of that back off fracture was left with the, with the alcohol sudden we start looking super realistic and this area down here all right this is all looking really close to the way I want it to look at this point But it's a little dark, so I want to lighten it up. I want to use my white metallic and diamond dust and my white spray paint. Lay a nice layer down. looking really good and we got some really tight selling in places we've got our our blacks fading to browns fading to off whites fading to whites everything about this is really close to the way I want it to look so I'm gonna leave it alone for right now. And then add my highlight effects to the top of it to kind of bring it all back together. So at this point, we're pretty much done with our alcohols. We're pretty much done with our spray paints. The last few things we wanna be using, oh, we're also done with our sponges if we wanna be. Now we can always go back through and add some definition if we want to, but I really like the way this turned out, so I'm not going to.
Sometimes I want to let it burn because it changes the texture, giving it a cool little different effect than everything everywhere else. <clears throat> now the reason I want to get the alcohol up there is because the marble spray will re-emulsify as soon as alcohol hits it. So we want it to be dry before we add our last layers to it. So we'll go through, just add some lines to these voids real quick with some paint. Doesn't take much, just kind of tie it in. With the stuff around it. Give it a little bit of the character. And just very selectively dab some alcohol with some metallic in it. Because it'll change just that one area and sharpen up the lines for us a little bit. looking really good. that whole section back to life with just a little bit of spray paint and alcohol. So that muddy mess that we started with turns into looking like this. I'm going to add a few more effects, torch it one more time, get rid of our alcohol, I like to do it with my gold first. I just kind of do it randomly and twist. Now the gold blends in really well with everything in the background, so we can go pretty liberal with it. Black, however, not so much. I'm only going to do a very little bit of black. I'm going to concentrate it on my dark areas of the piece to try to tie the dark area to the dark area. So That's looking pretty good. So now, <clears throat> all that marbling that I just put on is going to bleed because I want to hit this with alcohol one more time. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add mica flakes. Each layer of this texturing is going to give that dye that we put down and covered a hundred times now a new channel to run through. Each mica flake is going to give it a little bit of surface tension to cling to, so you can pretty much do this indiscriminately.
That was our whitish color. No, I'm sorry, that was our gold. I'm a little heavy on that. And again, it looks like a hot mess. Oh, actually, here we go. Watch how this changes when we start adding a little bit of alcohol to it. It's still going to want to move that die, but now that die has things to cling to that it didn't used to before. And it also helps the uh, mica flakes to stick to the substrate. Sorry about that. Yeah. Different size drops at random. Let it all move on you. And we're getting really, really close to the look that we want. I'm just trying to evaporate the alcohol without lighting it on fire because I really like what it's doing right now. This is ready for epoxy. It's just layers, layers and different chemicals. That's what we use, well, what I use, to create this super granular effect. And it'll look like this. Once we add some epoxy with some diamond dust and some black glitter to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to seal it because you don't want the epoxy to re-emulsify that dye because it'll start bleeding on you. Uh, I'm using Rust-Oleum Universal Advanced Formula Clear Durable Top Coat right now. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it though. Um, this is a petroleum based product and you really got to make sure that it dries all the way before you're using epoxy or otherwise it won't bond. Uh, from what I have experienced personally, uh, clear gloss enamel seems to work really well for sealing a piece before you put epoxy on it. I'm not a chemist, I don't know if that's the right thing to use, but it seems to work.
All right, so we'll come back in two or three hours and we will mix up some clear epoxy with diamond dust and black glitter. Those two things seem to add a, a layer of depth. The glitter seems to sink to the bottom while the diamond dust, the diamond dust, I'm sorry, stays suspended. And it, uh, it just adds another layer to what we've already done. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's not hard. And once you get into a rhythm, it's really easy. A uh, sample board this size takes longer than a five foot section of counter because you go through with your first layer of color, your second layer of color, and then you just kind of tweak it from there. So that's how I did the brown Persa granite. And I'll show you what it looks like when we put some epoxy to it here in a little bit. All right, this is going to be the tutorial video for the brown granite that everybody seems to love. I've had a lot of requests for how to do this particular pattern, so I uh, decided to make a video for you guys. Uh, I want to start with our ingredients and how we do it. Um, in isopropyl alcohol, I'm using 99%. I've got uh, some dark bronze metallic with a little bit of brown translucent dye. We've got diamond dust and white metallic and a copper colored metallic suspended in alcohol. You probably can't see it because my bottles are dirty. And of course, clean 99 ISO. Brown, translucent, and black dye. And these are the spray cans we're using. Some black and gold marble, black and white spray paint. Uh, antique gold and hammered copper um, having a hard time finding the uh, rust-oleum 2x right now so some of these are Krylon uh, they work okay not the best but they'll do in a pinch and finally some mica flakes uh, I think one of these is kind of like a gold and the other one is just white or silver and of course our applicator sponges this is the key to using this technique and I'll show you how that comes in later. Um, we're going to use this piece of plexiglass as our palette. We're going to squeeze out some dye, black and brown, onto that and use that to distribute it to our sponges to put it on our board. Now, on the board, it is primed with white bonding primer. And uh, what I did differently than normal was I did not sand the second layer, which gives you the beginnings of a pattern already for the background now we put down some of our bronze and some of our copper on this already just randomly with our alcohol spray bottles that is now dry so we're going to continue this video picking up where i left off there now that you guys know the recipe all right so our next step is going to be pre marbling for this we're going to use our black montana cans marble spray uh typically what I like to do here is use a fan. Actually, I'm just going to do it. Let's see. I want to have to apologize for the noise, but it's worth it because I found that by using a fan of some kind, it gives a completely different effect than you would normally get out of your Montana cans. Uh, find something to prop that up on a little further. Trash bucket will work just fine. So you're, normal, you're used to seeing how the, uh, the marble lays out and a swirly vein pattern. Well, by using an air mover or a fan, we're gonna straighten that out a little bit. All right, 
and that's about all we want to do really that's going to lead to a little bit of additional texturing with this technique that we're going to use we're going to be re-emulsifying the dyes on this several times which means adding alcohol to it to get it to break up and start traveling into some of these textured veins left by the bonding primer and now again by the black marble spray because if you used it before you know it's got a little bit of a texture to it. So we're just going to dust this lightly with some white 2x, uh, usually 2x, this time it's um, Krylon, just to dull out some of the black, make it more gray in areas than actual black. Not all of it, just where it's kind of heavy, blunt it out a little bit. And this will also help protect it because every time the alcohol hits these lines, it's going to want to run on you. But if you got a nice little thin film of white paint on there, it blunts that black out a little bit and keeps it from bleeding on you. All right, so now that we got that down, we're going to take our white and diamond dust and apply it liberally to give some uh, underlying sparkle to it. Big drops, little drops, don't matter. All right, so now to the fun part. Move this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I've used these sponges for an entire set of counters and God knows how many sample boards at this point. So these are already going to be pretty much pre-soaked with the dyes and the paints and such that we're going to be using. <coughs> but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit on hand. So this is, can't tell. All right, this is our brown. Squeeze some out on our palette. That makes this our black, which is almost empty, but that's fine, doesn't take much. All right, so we start with our darkest color first and build up from there. Pick a sponge that you like the indentations of. I think I use this one for black a lot, so I'm just going to kind of go back to it. Pick up some black, and we're just going to dab it on randomly. Doesn't really matter, kind of twisting it so you don't have repetitive images of this sponge anywhere. Dab some on our edges, do some heavier spots. Now the alcohol that we put down on the board is going to pull some of this off of the sponge. And if we start getting too light, we can just go back to our well on the palette and pull some more color. Kind of randomly, not really good, uh, being careful at all with this, just making sure the color is represented at least in most places. Not really fond of that big mess right there, so I'll throw some heavy black on that. All right. Now for our primary color, which is going to be the brown translucent in this particular recipe, uh, I'm going to use a larger sponge. Uh, I like this one quite a bit, so I'm just going to tear off a piece of it, give myself a new texture. I'll rub it around on this. Now it looks all black right now. But once that alcohol hits it and starts diluting it, it's going to look completely different. In fact, there's enough alcohol on the board, I can start, uh, I can see it start to bleed right now. Sponge dries up, you can always hit a little bit of alcohol and drop some heavier color onto it. 
doesn't really matter how careful you are at this point because this is all going to change and a lot of this is going to be coming back off the board I don't want to keep my sponge super wet because as I go, it's leaving different amounts of color in different places, which really helps to randomize what's going to happen here. I know it looks like a crappy mess right now, but right now all we're doing is distributing our colors in the proper amounts. And your mileage may vary. I can change from project to project, client to client, aesthetic that you want, the aesthetic that you want. All right, so we're still looking a little light on color, so I'm gonna come back over here and grab my dark brown and my copper and add some alcohol to this. Now this is gonna start mixing with the dyes that we just put down and creating their own unique colors. It doesn't matter how much we get on the surface, we're just trying to put color down right now. Oh yeah, that's looking nice and messy. Alright, I got company. I'm going to have to pause the video and come back. Now, your board is going to look super muddy like this. That's not a problem. We'll fix it.